Hi there, everyone. Welcome. It is Dorothy Inez coming to you live Sunday. Uh, what is today? Sunday, March 15th, March 15th. And my topic today is what has hashtag coronavirus come to teach us? And I really got inspired. Hi, Anna. I really got inspired today. I woke up this morning and I was listening to my two uh, favorite spiritual teachers, uh, Stephen Furtick and Dr. Reverend Michael Bernard Beckwith. And I, I just got so inspired and I came, hi Julie, I see you. And I came and I just did a little journaling and I was thinking about what has the coronavirus come to teach us? What is this virus inviting us to do? And who is it inviting us to be as humanity? And so I began to sit down and just think about it and, and also just kind of marinate on what these two great teachers in my life were saying. And I just, I wrote some notes and I thought, you know, why not come on here and share with you what has come through to me and also what I learned from, uh, from, from these two great teachers. And so the first thing that I've noticed, I don't know about you, but within my own self, what I've noticed that the coronavirus is inviting me and many in my circle to be healthy, to really take our body temple seriously. Because when we look at who is the coronavirus affecting, it's affecting those of us who have a low immune system, a low immune system. So it's inviting us to be conscious. What are we feeding our body temple? Are you putting in good, nutritious um, food? Foods. Um, are you taking your supplements every day? I know I have. I used to be like, oh, I, I'm forgetting. You know, I, I forgot my vitamins today. No big deal. And now I'm like, oh, no, I'm getting in my vitamins for the day. I'm making sure I'm getting in my antioxidants. I'm making sure that I'm taking my vitamin D supplements, my fish oil, my magnesium, all of these things that doctors had been telling me to do that I was like, ah, just kind of, mm, just kind of not doing it consistently. So it's inviting us to be consistent about how we care for our bodies. It's inviting us to get out and move our bodies. It's inviting us to, you know, to get more sleep. Because how many of you know when you're not sleeping, when you're not sleeping, your immune system goes down. Many of you that follow me may know that I struggle. I've had a sleep disorder for about 22 years. I don't need any supplements, so don't send me your, your advertisements. But I have suffered with sleep, a sleep disorder for about 20 years. And when that cycle comes around, I notice I begin to have a scratchy throat and I begin to feel sick. So this requires that we begin to sleep. We begin to exercise. We begin to eat healthy. We begin to take our supplements. Number two, it's inviting us to slow down, to slow down. Because some people, it depends on where you are. I know I have two friends in Italy that are on quarantine. And it's inviting us to slow our go, 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 go life down and really begin to learn to be with ourselves. Many of us don't know how to be with ourselves. Many of us, you number one, we're always with people. We're always doing something rather than being something. We don't know what it is to pick up a book and read a book. We don't know what it is to engage with our family anymore, have game night. We don't even know what it is to engage with people anymore in this generation. So this coronavirus is inviting us to reconnect with ourselves, to do a little bit of self-care, something many of us have forgotten. 
Number three, the social distancing. The social distancing invites us to begin to cherish the moments we actually get to spend in human contact. Human contact is essential for human beings. How many of you know, I'm sure many of you moms know, that babies need human contact. We were born to be in community. And this social distancing, when we can't hug each other, we can't kiss each other, we can't hold each other's hands, we begin to recognize, you know, the importance of human contact. And it, it makes us cherish those moments that we've taken for granted, especially in a day, a day and age of social media. Pastor um, Reverend Michael was talking about how people, this generation, you can be sitting right next to someone and what is everybody doing at the table? They're, they're, they're on their phones. We've forgotten what it means to be connected, really connected. And so number four, the coronavirus is inviting us, inviting us to be in community, common unity. That's what community means. And so it invites us to help others, to serve others, especially our sickly, our people that are disadvantaged, people who, who may not be able to afford to be off work for two weeks, to be in quarantine. How can we be in service should be the question. Rather than just simply caring about yourself, maybe some of that extra that you got, how can you share that abundance with others? We begin to realize in common unity how our actions impact others. When I don't cover my mouth, and the best way to cover your mouth, and I just learned this, I always thought, oh, this was the way. But no, we end up putting those germs in our hands. Some people do this, and the, 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 the bacteria is going everywhere. I learned the best way to cough is in our arm, and right here. So when we do that and when we teach our children, because I see children not covering their mouths when I'm working at the health club, um, I see parents not doing it. When we do that, we protect each other. We protect each other through our actions, through saying, you know what, I've got a cough. I'm going to care about my fellow brother, my fellow sister, and I'm not going to go out in public and expose them. Maybe I'll ask a friend or somebody to go and help me, a family member, to go and do my grocery shopping. Can you volunteer your services and help someone else? If you are healthy, you know, a healthy person, how can you be of help? And so this reminds us of our oneness. Again, that common unity, that oneness is what this virus is inviting us to do. And then I thought too, this virus is inviting us to return to our faith. It is inviting us to remember the power that is greater than us. It is inviting us to be more prayerful. It is inviting us to love more. It is inviting us to worship because how many of us know that when we pray more, when we love more, when we worship and sing and lift our voices, that it raises the vibration on the planet. That's what this is inviting us to do. It's learning because see, we can't control this. We in our own power can't control it. There's things we can do to slow it down. But these are things when you raise your vibration through prayer, through love, through worship, that helps you to be in joy. And so the more you're in joy and less in stress, guess what happens? You facilitate healing within your body. Because see, a body that's in stress, this is one thing I learned from my health coaching training, that when we're in stress, our immune system is low. And so when we're in high vibe mode, 
guess what? We're, where our immune system is higher. I told a friend the other day, don't sit here thinking about what's gonna happen if you get the virus, because see, then your body, your cells begin to respond to that, and guess what? You open yourself up to the virus. So I just invite you to be in prayer, be in meditation, be in love, be in worship. Don't let this get you down. Look at ways that you can allow it to lift you up. Because if you follow me, you know that I always say life is happening for us, not to us. One of the greatest lessons that Reverend Michael Bernard Beckwith has taught me over the last umpteen, not umpteen, but uh, years, seven years or so I've been um, studying with him, that life is happening for for us, not to us. So you always want to live in the question, what is this thing, this situation, this person here to teach me? How can I grow from this situation? And you know, and another thing I thought was interesting that he brought up is he said Ebola, the H1N1 virus, and these other viruses that have been around before he said people are still being impacted by these, but people aren't freaking out because they aren't the latest trend in the news. So soon, hopefully soon, when this starts to warm up, this will be less in the news until it comes up again. But how can you be prepared? How can you begin to love on your body temple more? How can you begin to cherish the people and things in your life more? How can you connect to yourself, to God more, even without a crisis? That's what this invites us to do. So I just want to encourage you. In this day when it feels scary, don't walk around being in fear because God has not given you a spirit of fear, but one of love, peace, 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 and a sound mind. We don't need to go crazy, um, you know, building up. You want to be prepared. You want to take right action, but remember to think about your fellow Brother, your fellow sister, take care of yourself during this time and ask yourself, what lessons can you learn from this time? Who can you choose to be in this moment? You can choose to be a beacon of light or you can choose to be a beacon of darkness, somebody who's always just talking about this, talking about this and bringing others down. So I hope that this message today, I pray that, that it has blessed you, it has encouraged you, it has given you a different way to think about this virus that's out here. It's a reality we're living with right now, but how are you going to choose to be and think about it as we move forward? God bless, peace and blessings. Bye.